Hi, this is International Master David Proust for Chess.com with another basic checkmate that will be of great use to you. The most common type of endgames are rook endgames. And uh, in many cases, when your last pawn gets close to queening, what your opponent will do is sacrifice their rook for that pawn so you don't get a new queen. And then you need to be able to checkmate with a single rook. So this is also a pretty common checkmate. And of course, another point of learning these basic checkmates is that they help you learn how to use these pieces in the endgame. In this case, you know, how to use your king and rook, how to fight against an opponent's king. This is like fundamental stuff in terms of how to use the pieces on a very empty board. It gives you a good, pure sense of how they work. So useful stuff here for anyone who doesn't know this. As with the checkmate with a queen, the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out what would a checkmate look like. How could you set up these three pieces so that it would actually be checkmate? There actually aren't a lot of options because this king, at the very worst, will have three squares available to him, plus the square he's on, four squares you have to attack. Your king and rook are not that powerful. There aren't many options for this, but this is one of them. And this can work even if the king is a little bit in the middle of the side of the board and not the corner, but there's no way to checkmate him if he's not on the side of the board, right? Six squares is the most you could possibly take away from him, and that would leave him with three outs, okay? So let us realize that we need to chase the king to the back rank, and then we need to try and get a position where our king is in front of him and checkmate with the rook on the back rank, all right? So the main principle that we're going to use to improve our position is something called Zugzwang. And before we start here at the beginning, we're going to start at the end. So imagine this position here, and white has just played, let's say, his king in front of the opponent's king. And imagine how would you get checkmate here. So your opponent is going to see that you're threatening checkmate in one move, and he's going to move his king out of the way. Now, would this move be checkmate? No, right? Because it would let his king out. So you need to get your king in front of the opponent's king again, right? If you want to checkmate him. But as you might well imagine, his king is not going to stand around and wait for you to checkmate. He'll step out of the way again. So actually, trying to put your king on the square you want vis-a-vis -vis your opponent's king is not getting you anywhere, right? He will always just step away. So you have to use the principle of Zugzwang, which is forcing your opponent to move where you want him to move, instead of trying to go straight for where you want to be. So in this position, for example, white's best move is actually to play something called a waiting move, like this with the rook. The point is, your opponent's king is currently at its best position, close to the center of the back edge of the board, but not directly in front of your king. Any move he makes will worsen his position. For example, he could move here, and you would have checkmate in one move. Or he could move here, but now he's closer to being stuck against the edge of the board. Now, how do you follow up here? Now you move your king. Again, if he steps in front of your king, you have checkmate. But he has to move somewhere, right? So he moves towards the edge of the board. And you are continuing to worsen his position using the principle of Zugzwang. Now, Zugzwang does not come up in the opening or middle game very often at all. It's extremely rare. But in the end game, it comes up a lot because in the end game, you only have one or two pieces. There's a good chance that they might all be on their best square already and you don't want to move them to worse squares. In the opening or middle game, you almost always have some pieces which are not ideally placed and which you could try to improve or bring to better squares. So white is using the fact that black has to move against him and black is eventually going to bump into the edge of the board, then be forced to even step right in front of the white king where white wanted him, and white will checkmate the black king. Now guess what? If the rules of chess didn't say that you had to move, if you had the option to pass, then king and rook against king would be a draw. Because in this position here, black would just refuse to move. He would say, no, I don't really need to do anything. I'm happy with where my pieces are. You know, I have nothing I need to do. So then it would be up to white to move. So white, you know, would try and do this if he wanted to checkmate the king, go opposite him. And then black would say, well, yeah, now I'll defend against that by moving away. 
And, um, you know, then white would say, okay, I put my rook over here. And now again, black would say, well, I don't want to step here. I don't want to move away. So I'll just pass. And it would be a draw. So the only reason you can win this end game is because of Tsugtsvang, the fact that your opponent is forced by the rules to make a move. And that is the case with a lot of end games, that actually the way you win is by forcing your opponent to move into worse and worse squares or to remove his pieces from their best squares. And then you take over some of that territory or you know, then you're able to affect some kind of threat that you had to wait for him to walk into. So from the beginning, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to try and gradually restrict the Black King and force him to the back rank. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our Rook to take away ranks whenever possible. Okay, So we'll start by cutting the board in half. Right Now he's got just the top half of the board left. Starts moving the king. Now, our rook by itself can't force the king to the back rank, unlike the king and queen endgame. So we need to bring our king in right away. Anytime he attacks your rook, you're well advised to not just keep advancing your king because you want to improve your king position and watch him eat your rook. Instead, you should show that you're slightly alert and move your rook away, but maintain it on the file that you want. Now, in general, what you'll find is your rook is best placed far away from enemy kings. That way they can't attack him, but he still controls the squares around them just as well from a distance. So the enemy king comes here, and the white king steps up. Now, if the black king comes in front of our king, we do like a mini checkmate, right? And we attack like this. We've covered these six squares here. And it's not checkmate because he can step back, but that's also progress for us, right? He's forced to move back. We will move our king into the center. He attacks our rook. We move our rook away. He comes here. Now, you want to check him when you force him back, right? So what do we need here? What kind of a move? A waiting move, right? So we just mark time with the rook, still maintaining the coverage of the fifth rank. The enemy king steps away, we follow. Eventually he steps in front of us, we check him, and he's forced back another rank. We go after him. He steps over here. We switch our rook to the other side, creating again a situation where he has to step in front of our king or keep moving. Right? So he moves, we follow. He steps in front, we check. He comes here, we come after him, king in front of king. And if he comes this way, now we've got this knight move. We don't want to chase him, right? You've seen this from the beginning. We play a waiting move. Excellent. He steps aside. We follow him. Ultimately, he can't run away. He bumps into the edge of the board, steps back in front of us, and checkmate. And that is all there is to checkmating with king and rook. As before, I suggest that with these kind of fundamental positions, you actually practice playing them out against a person or against a computer engine. You need to successfully do this position at least three times before moving on to other positions. Um, and I think doing it more than that would be good. It'll go fast once you've learned it. So you want to restrict the king, cut him off across ranks with the rook, bring your king in, and remember this pattern of Tsugsvang, right? We always made progress in a situation where our king is now a knight's move away from their king with our rook cutting off and if he steps towards us, we check him back. And if he steps away from us, we keep taking away his territory with our king. And eventually he has to step in front of us and we check him back. So good luck with that. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you around on chess.com.